great lines are still coming right off the Bunker live stream. The Quincy vs. Soraper special. It's a controversial one, to say the least. I think a lot of people went into this live stream with a super high expectation of getting season 2 characters, and was ultimately disappointed that we got a character like Eban. But I will say personally, all three characters are great. They're all great characters, and we also got some pretty cool announcements within this live stream. Something that we've been particularly asking for, for literal years. So of course, with that, in this video, we are going to be breaking down everything that was announced in this Bunker live stream in one easy to digest video. And starting off the live stream, of course, we had Brave Souls news number one, which revealed the three new characters coming to the game on the 31st. In this case, we have a new Technique Bambietta, a new Heart Kilge, and a new Power Eban. Wasn't entirely the banner that a lot of us were expecting, I will be honest. I was still expecting season 1 characters, but I thought they would have went more so in the future to the first invasion. But I guess it does make sense to finally get around to doing these characters, characters that are seen within the first three episodes of Thousand Year Ledwar. In this case, Eban and Kyoge make sense to be together. I personally would have included an Ichigo to go alongside these three instead of Bambietta, but since we just got an Ichigo, I guess it makes sense why they didn't include him. And maybe they have plans to give us another Bunker Ichigo, this time against Yuha, maybe for end of year. Who actually knows. But the quick TLDW of all the characters, Bambietta is a Technique Captain Killer, gonna be a great nuka for the Captain Killer guild quests, and she also does come with a new mechanic, where her SA2 works as a machine gun type of attack, where she just shoots out a bunch of explosions. She has a really good kit, a great set of skills too, overall gonna be a very solid and definitely sought after Technique character for a lot of people. Kyoke is a heart of rank with an amazing set of strong attacks and a really high damage output thanks to his frenzy plus two, 80% SP boost and also the rampage skill. Alongside that, he also does recover your team's strong attack recharge by 20% every time you move into another map. This is going to make him one of the better limit break characters in the game, but alongside that, just one of the better characters in the game, period. And then we have Iban, definitely the least exciting character of the banner, but Caleb are making him a character you potentially want to get since he is going to be a farmer. In his case, he is a power human killer with the plus five technique links potion soul trait and by using this character you can get 50% more crystals 70% more coins 10 guaranteed technique droplets and also increase the droplet drop rate by 30% he is unironically one of the ultimate farmers in the entire game only thing he's missing here is super links or potions but alongside that he also does have a pretty good damage output and can actually increase your team's special move damage by 30% if you are a power character so he also pairs quite well with someone like thousand year blood war yamamoto the banner itself is overall very solid. I actually really do like the visuals for all three. Even unironically looks really good. Kyoge looks amazing. Definitely the highlight character for me and someone that I've been waiting years for. And then Bambietta, given the fact that it is a base from Bambietta that really only does a few things against Sargent in episode 4 of Thousand Year Blood War, I think they managed to make a pretty cool looking kit. And I'm excited to see what they have next planned for the next set of Sturmwriters or Thousand Year Blood War characters that literally might be here in less than 30 or so days. But one of the cool things announced alongside this banner is a new change to the potential future of mid-month and end-of-month banners. In this case, by going to step 25, you get a guaranteed selector ticket for any of the three banner characters. So finally, after eight years, we got our first pity system. One of the best announcements to come from the entire game, and this alone, in my opinion, is worthy of a bunker live stream. Now, of course, 5,600 orbs for one banner character is quite hefty, but this is kind of in line with a lot of other gacha games. Caleb aren't doing anything revolutionary here, but it is great to see us go in a better direction, finally getting a guaranteed banner character. No longer should I be able to hear any horror stories of people spending upwards to 10,000 orbs without getting a character. I know some people out there will say who has 5,000 plus orbs laying around for one banner character, but the matter of fact is, people constantly go past step 25, free to play all whales, and it's always nice to have that bad luck protection. By the time you do 25 steps, the hope would be to actually get the character, maybe dupes of the character, and at least that 25th step can get you someone that you're missing, or get you a dupe of the character you've been going for. I'm super happy about this change, and the main thing to take away from this is that if you are saving for X character, let's say you are waiting for Esnor, Giselle, or any future Thousand Year Blood War character, make sure you have at least 5,000 plus orbs ready for the time they do release, so you can get them. I, of course, would hope to see this pity get improved upon as we do go into the future, but right now, all I can say, it's a great step in the right direction. After that, we finally got some extra information of stuff that was announced in the previous Bunker live stream. In this case, the new battle power display that will be seen on our status screen. It's right at the top, so it's hard to miss. 
And in this case, everyone's account is going to look very different, but I guess it's a way to compare accounts and see who has the better account. Nothing super crazy, but personally, I do like stuff like this, and it kind of encourages you to work on your entire box just to raise that power level. If we can potentially get rewards for going to a certain milestone, that'll be really cool and extra encouraging to work on your entire box. But the way you raise this particular battle power until we find out more information is that if you transcend your characters, level up your link slots, resurrect, those are gonna be the ways to raise this power level. And I guess if we ever do account reviews sometime in the future, now we can get a decent look at how good your box actually is. After that, we're getting player ranks obviously as of right now the max rank is level 50 but going forward into the future it's actually changing to go from rank 1 to 50 you have to complete a certain set of challenges in this case this is going to be a more traditional rank and to increase it all you have to do is play the game by playing quests raid battles guild quests you're going to be getting xp to build this rank up so i guess in this case it's going to be more telling on who actually plays the game more as your rank will be higher than others it's very similar to guild XP. If you're in a guild, every time you beat a quest, you get XP. Doesn't really do much, but within your guild, you get to see who actually plays the game more. And I guess in this case, this will be an extra way to tell, this time though, to the entire community. And once more, yet to be confirmed, I hope we do get rewards for reaching certain milestones just to get that extra incentive of playing the game. Next up, more information about the upcoming guild quest difficulty. In this case, very hard. Would have preferred if they called it ultra or ultimate, but very hard, I'm fine with it. One thing to keep in mind too, to even get access to the very hard difficulty of guild quest, you will have to complete the high difficulty first, which for most of us out there really isn't much of a problem. But additional change that we did see is that the guild quest tickets are now being increased from 3 to 5, which hopefully means more rewards. And for those that are wondering in terms of the information itself, on the very hard screen, the rules are the exact same as the high difficulty. This could just be a development image. We have to wait and see exactly what the new difficulty is going to entail. It might be different what we are seeing here. But on the live stream, we did potentially think there was going to be iron skin. That is not the case. The rules, again, are the exact same from the very hard to the hard difficulty. So if anything, as of right now, the very hard difficulty looks to only increase the amount of stamina and potentially enemies that will be featured in this particular quest. Again, once more, we'll get more information about that sometime in the future. After that, as already announced, there will be more changes to the guild quest, this time to the rewards. Weekly rewards will now be decided depending on your league and rating. As of right now, it is currently an RNG rewards. So in the future, you're now encouraged as a guild to rank higher, push higher, because the higher you are in the S League, A League, or B League, the best rewards you are going to be getting. Alongside that, the wave rewards, the rewards you get for clearing X amount of waves, will now be changed to a score rewards, and once more, it's no longer RNG dependent. The rewards you do get is depending on the score you do get. So if you possibly can guarantee also getting a certain score, one, it will give you more reason to max out your characters and work for a higher score, but two, if you can get that high score, then you're now guaranteed a potential good reward instead of relying on RNG. Additionally, they are going to be making a pretty big but definitely positive change regarding the guild quest periods. In this case, phase one will now be from Tuesday to Thursday, while phase two is from Friday to Sunday. And now your entire week score will be calculated on Mondays. So Monday, we don't have to do guild quests. This is a great change, especially as of recent current time zones in the EU, the guild quest ranking period ends at like three in the morning. Now it should end at a much reasonable time. Gilquest will be down the whole day for Monday. And hopefully, at least when it comes to modding, since they have more time to calculate the scores, one more top, Caleb will now have an easier time dealing with those cheaters. But alongside that, they are now changing how scores are reflected. Currently, as of right now, you have freeze tickets a day. And the highest score you do get within those free tickets for each individual day over the course of a week is the score that is reflected onto the leaderboards. In this case, only the highest score in total from the first and second phase will be calculated towards your score. This allows you to be a lot more flexible and no longer will you be forced to do your guild quest every single day. That's one big thing about S-rank guilds. You have to do your guild quest every single day without fail. And if you're in a very competitive S-rank guild and you're trying to go for a very high score, well, you might end up spending multiple hours every day just to get that particular score. Now, all you gotta do is focus on one very good score and the rest of your tickets can just be whatever scores. Doesn't matter. You don't even have to do your guild quest if you don't want to. In my opinion, this will make guild quest a lot more competitive, but at the same time, make it more lenient. Some days you don't want to play BBS. Sometimes you don't want to do your guild quest. Maybe you can't do your guild quest for whatever X reason. Now with these changes, you will no longer have to get screamed at by your guildmates for missing a guild quest. And it's also going to be a lot harder to miss a guild quest. So really great changes coming our way. For most people that don't play guild quest, this might not seem like a lot, but trust me, as someone that isn't a competitive s rank guild, these are some of the best changes that I could possibly ask for. Really great changes, and it's going to make Gilgris overall as a whole less, less stressful, but also at the same time more fun and competitive.
After that, we got the confirmation that Bleach Brave Souls has officially hit 80 million downloads, and with that, on the 31st, we are going to get the 80 million download celebration. We don't know the full information, but as already announced on the live stream, they did say we are going to get a six-star battle ready summon ticket, and we are once more getting the free accessory summons. So a guaranteed five-star accessory and seven free accessory multis. Still waiting for the new accessories though, no information about that. Obviously we have the Fellows New Battle Banner coming out on the 31st, we'll get the information about the Fellows starting tomorrow morning. And to go with that, we have a guaranteed Fellows New Bloodwork character, this time including every single Fellows New Bloodwork character, including the previous round with Yamamoto, Charger, and Yachiru, and of course also the three new characters, Iban, Kyoge, and also Bambietta. It's not gonna happen to me, but it might happen to you where you walk with the character you want, Kyoge, Bambietta, Yamamoto, or maybe even Yachiru. The rate of course, so it does include every thousand new Bloodwork character, but the possibility is there. Although keep in mind, 8th Anniversary White and also Ichigo are probably not included in this since they aren't by definition classed as thousand year Bloodwork characters. So I wouldn't expect them to be in this particular pool. But with that, that was basically the Bankai livestream in a nutshell. Again, some pretty cool stuff. In terms of announcements, we didn't really get anything entirely new. For the most part, they just showed us stuff that was already announced. We did get some information regarding the guild stuff, and I do like all the announcements that we did get. But one of the bigger things to come from this live stream, one of the bigger things to happen in the most recent years, to be fair, is the pity system. Definitely something that I'm going to appreciate if I ever do need to go to step 25 for one particular character. And again, I do feel like the new three characters coming to the game, yes, even Eburn, are actually pretty cool, and I'm somewhat excited. I do think the reveal could have been handled a bit better. I feel like the lack of a trailer definitely ruined the vibe for me. I like reacting to new characters in a trailer format that's just me personally but the artworks are all stunning the visuals i think look great but the only thing that stopped me from wanting to summon on this banner was how casual it is because this was so casually dropped we might be getting a new thousand year brother banner next month or the month after and i kind of want to say for esnot kilgren and esnot were the two star wrenches that i was really looking forward to from season one to be implemented into the game and we've been waiting for the better half of three plus years so to see one of them finally here with a way better design and some really cool visuals to boot yeah i'm gonna have to do at least a few steps by the way, hope you liked and enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.